Hi right, guys. Okay, right. The first off, the eagle eyed amongst you will notice that raw therapy here. Ah, uh, we're running raw therapy 5.9 on a Mac. Yes, we are. Uh, thanks to uh, Hiram, who's done a rebuild of the uh, Mac version of uh, the latest iteration of raw therapy. And uh, so far, it's running perfectly fine on my machine. And what I'll do is, down in the description panel below, I'll put a link where you can go and download this from iRoom's Keybase. Okay, so what do we want to talk about today? Well, what I want to do is follow on from the previous video that I did, where I uh, pointed you to uh, a link on my uh, Dropbox, where you can go and download all the Adobe DCP profiles for um, em employing in raw therapy on your raw files. So we'll just open this quick grab shot, stock shot, is it of a rape oil seed rape field. Um, this is just down the road from uh, Benton Cliffs in uh, Yorkshire. And uh, it shot quite a while ago on a D2 access crop centered camera, yes. And just to go through the colour profiles again, you can see it's on camera standard. And you can also see that this auto-matched camera profile is greyed out, so you can't activate it. So we'll go to custom, and then we'll click none, and we'll go to 2022 camera profiles. And um, no, we won't. We'll go to camera. What am I doing? And uh, what we'll do is we'll scroll down to... Uh, Nikon D2 access, okie dokie, and we'll open that folder, and uh, I'm just going to pull up the camera neutral profile, and uh, we'll activate that, and then activate the uh, loop table, and uh, we'll also activate the tone curve, and there you go, I mean the image is basically, basically processed for you. Um, now if we come on to, um, back to the browser, and I go to this uh, 1DX Mark II um, shot of Miguel uh, taking over in Norway. And uh, let's just wait for it to open up. There we go. And so this is what it looks like with the camera standard profile att input profile attached to it. And you can see auto match camera profile is again greyed out. So what we'll do is we'll go to custom, click none. And then we'll come back to camera and um, we will scroll up, Andy. Uh, yes, we will to uh, a 1DX Mark II, rather like that. And again, I'm just going to pick camera neutral and we'll go open and uh, we'll engage the loop table for the camera and the tone curve. And now you can see it's thrown a boatload of contrast into it. Do not worry, stay exactly where you are. Come down to Abstract Profile, go to Custom, and then start to lift up the slope of the image, rather like that. Okie dokie. And then we might play around with the Gamma, just to bring the contrast a little bit more under control. And just move it around until you get a nice balance. Uh, rather like that and uh, we can go into that image at one to one and uh, we can just have a look at it and there's Miguel with his nictitating membrane pulled across his eyes trying to work out if I look more delicious and edible with a fog filter placed over me yes <laughs> right so the next thing I want to do is come back to the file browser and I'm going to open this shot here Okie dokie, and uh, this is, um, oh god, I forgot the name of the mine now, it's an old um, deserted lead mine over in um, Derbyshire near Bakewa, and uh, I'm damned if I can re remember the name of it, I should do, but well, there you go. Now, interestingly enough, I mean, just to give you some context, this is a foreground shot uh, for a uh, Milky Way composition that I intend to shoot over this mine and uh, as is my usual case when I'm going to do a Milky Way shot um, what you might call a wide field astro shot where I'm using a landmark as a foreground 
and uh, I want the landmark obviously, the foreground obviously in sharp focus. I actually do my foreground shots uh, before it goes dark and then manipulate them in Photoshop afterwards so that they blend in with the sky and the uh, Milky Way. Um, but anyway, um, so let's come back to a fit to screen view and we'll do the same thing again and we'll go custom and I will come to camera and this was shot on a Nikon D800E so what we'll do is we'll scroll down to Nikon D800E and there it is and I could go to neutral to start off with and click open activate the uh, color loop table for the camera activate the tone curve all right, but you'll also notice that auto matched camera profile is not greyed out here. So I could check that and you'll see I'll get a slightly different result. Um, it's gone a little bit darker and a bit more contrasty in the shadows. So what I'll do is I'll come back and select uh, custom again. And we could indeed go and change that to camera standard and see what that looks like and uh, it, it's gone even darker than the auto match profile so let's go back to auto match profile let's come back to custom again and uh, i actually prefer it with the neutral profile on um, but mm, i might not in a moment because what i'm going to show you now is a tool which mm, I never really see, not that I ever see much demonstrated with raw therapy on the old interweb and uh, the old tube of view. Um, but this tool I'm going to show you now is one of my favourites. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll come back over to the um, exposure tab. And what we're going to do is we're just going to activate dynamic range compression. Alrighty, so we'll turn that on and uh, we'll let it do its thing. And uh, there you go. Now that's alright, isn't it? Before um, I explain what's going on there, um, let's come back to the color pro uh, the color tab, and let's just see: do we now want to go to um, camera standard and see if that makes a bit of a difference? And just let it process through, and uh, yeah, it's br it brought us a little bit more contrast in the darker tones, but it hasn't really. Um, made the shadows go much darker. Now, what is happening with this uh, dynamic range compression? There it is off, there it is on. So, what's actually happening? Uh, because I've got other uh, adjustments turned on, uh, there will be a bit of a lag while it's actually processing the image. Um, but you can think of yourself, if you notice, you've got an anchor slider at the bottom. Uh, this is the dark tones in the image. Think of this as your shadows. These are the light tones in your image. Think of these as the highlights. And sort of at 50%, um, we're, we're on the mid-tones. And what we're doing is we're, we're proportionally lifting the shadow areas up to match the mid-tones and proportionally adjusting the highlight areas down towards the mid-tones. Um, so there's some very fancy stuff going on um, in this algorithm. And at default, with an amount of 20, detail level of 30, and an anchor point of 50, you usually find that this will make a big, big difference to your images. Um, if we want to bring the highlights down further and not lift the shadows quite so much, we might turn the anchor point to around about 20 and just let that process out. And there you go. So now it's gone. Overall, it's gone darker. But you can see that it is the lighter half of the tones in the image that have actually gone more dark uh, than the shadows. Because don't forget what the shadows look like before uh, there so really and truly there's not a great deal of difference in the shadow exposure in the pro part processed image and of course what we could do is we could move the shadows up even higher if we needed to um, by actually just moving the anchor point towards the right hand end of the scale so we've changed from 50 to 70 72. Now, 
the amount slider is obviously the amount of compression which is going on, or the amount or strength of the effect, or rather like that, so we don't want that because that's just gone. Whoa. But you see, you could take that into Photoshop, or you could actually push it a little bit further and take it into Photoshop, then duplicate the layer and put the duplicated layer in like the multiply blend mode and you could actually bring the tonality of your image um, more into line with where you want but the let's go and put that back to default and just let it process out again and the detail slider this area here as i understand it i uh, would represent because we're moving shadows up more than we bring in highlights down this would represent the amount of detail in the shadows and what we could do is we could mitigate the contrast fall off if there is one uh, when you do this operation uh, rather by lifting the detail up and you can see where we're going now we brought more contrast back into the shadows by making some of the very darker tones in the shadows more like uh, what they were before we actually engaged the dynamic range compression module in the first place so there you go guys so that's an update we've now got raw therapy 5.9 for mac up and running thanks to hiram and um, a little bit more on the um, color side of things inside of raw therapy and using these um, Adobe DCP profiles, which I'll link you to in the previous video. Don't forget, Windows and Linux users can go and use those profiles just as easily as I do. And also, um, the difference you will see between using the Adobe DCP profiles and the DCP profiles that actually come as auto-matched camera profile. You see, we've now switched over to that. Things have gone a little bit more colourful, you know. So you can actually mix and match these things and just go with whatever you think or feel matches what you want from your image. Okay, guys. Um, first off, thanks to all my Patreon supporters. You couldn't do this without you. Guys who are not members of my Patreon channel, right now I think there's just over 170 members-only posts and articles over there, which you might find of interest. And so, yeah, a big, big thanks to all my Patreon supporters, because I couldn't really do this without you. And uh, also everybody else, I um, hope you found that useful, hope you found it interesting. And until the next time, stay safe, stay well, keep taking the pictures, don't do anything I wouldn't do, so that gives you plenty of scope. And uh, I'll see you soon in the next video. So until then, toodaloo.